Okay. So, um, so we just um, get, get back to that question, which Divya asked, uh, how does one gain confidence and trust of the leader? Well, um, uh, again, just to remind us that, um, just to reiterate that it is um, commitment and faithfulness um, and being consistent in what we are committed to uh, and to have a, uh, uh, and, and let that be, you know, uh, let that be something that is consistent like over a period of time. Um, you know, I'm just reminded of, uh, you know, Acts chapter 7, right? Acts chapter um, 6, sorry. Um, so this is what they uh, said when they wanted to search out people, seven men, uh, who, who are going to kind of look after this, uh, you know, uh, distribution, daily distribution, right, of food. So the first thing was uh, good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, um, and this is what they this this these qualities uh, is what they wanted to look uh, look for very visible like good reputation, which means people also um, you know we build a reputation uh, with people, and it's it happens over a period of time. How's the reputation built? Because it's not a one-time thing. You know, it's like people see, and then they say, "Okay, um, this is what we see in this person." Right? Full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. So, um, and also we we go on to see that they actually did. Uh, they were people of prayer, etc. They ministered, uh, and then uh, we see great things happening. Right. They they ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit as well, and when we read about Stephen, we read about you know uh, so very committed, commit commitment uh, did not waver in the face of danger and imminent death. Right till the end, faithful faithfulness and uh, and he, he was committed. So we see that. So these are qualities which um, which really give uh, you know if you are a leader, which will give you the confidence knowing that you can rely on. You know, such and such a person. So this is what we see in the world, right? Also, uh, I would say that uh, you know there are times when people um, recommend people, right? People whom we trust and know, they they recommend, uh, and then they say, okay, you know, this person is good. Of course, we need to see for it ourselves, uh, but then we recommend, and that's what the Barnabas did, right, to solve. So uh, Barnabas actually took him and he introduced him and say, you know, this is this is someone whom I uh, I noticed, uh, my saw, and then he takes Saul and introduces and kind of uh, gives him that you know that opening um, and that and that encouragement. Um, so we see that right. He kind of connects him to other leaders and who who notice the call. And we encourage him in the call. So, you know that also happens, right? Okay. Let me just quickly share um, that uh, to-do list, which might be uh, helpful. Uh, I'll put it on the stream, but I'll just quickly go through that, right? Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. It's called. Uh, okay, it's just coming up on your screen. Okay, it's called the 18 minutes daily thing, uh, daily uh, whatever list. So it's um, first five minutes. Okay, you actually sit down to do the list, um, and what will, and decide. Okay, how? Uh, what are those areas that I need to cover? So it's basically uh, a six uh, area, six main areas if you want to look at. You know, uh, so it's it's not just one list and one area. It, these are you know at least six, or I mean uh, to a max of six, right? Six areas. So we uh, we look at that list. I mean, this is just one of the tools. Okay, this is not the thing, but I found this uh, useful uh, to do. So one minute of every hour that you work, you you can actually set a uh, time. For that particular task, and after every hour, you you check the list, okay, and see uh, what has happened and what what am I getting distracted, 
Am I doing what needs to be done? You know, so it helps to refocus. Then at the end of it, uh, you do, so it means that you would have spent about, if, it, if, you, if it's a typical eight hour uh, uh, work, you would have spent about eight minutes on that, right? So first five minutes to do the list, eight minutes are just the review or the refocus. And then the evening, at the end, uh, again, a five um, minute to review how how is it, you know, did I waste any time, etc. Okay, so, uh, of course, I, I don't do it very diligently, this five minutes and uh, refocusing every uh, one minute. But what I do uh, use, what I found to be helpful is uh, is this, um, you know, um, I'm just trying to see if there's an image of it. Uh, just a minute. Um, no, I don't think I have that image. Okay, um, I don't have that. Okay, anyway, I'll uh, share these two uh, with you, and you can. Uh, think. So um, yeah, so what what I do is actually typically uh, you know have um, so I have these six uh, or uh, maximum six areas. So I have let's say um, uh, my areas would be okay marriage, ministry, you know whatever needs to be done in that. Um, like people come and apply for the marriage um, uh, marriage preparation for marriage to be solemnized so i have that as one of the things okay uh, what what needs to be done in that uh, then uh, maybe it could be things like okay uh, order of service needs to be planned or these people need to be uh, you know put in touch with a, a, a marriage um, facilitator so that they can start the process and and uh, maybe some some we do um, an assessment uh, after they finish about five lessons you know i have a meeting with the parents uh, and with the couple um, and have a chat with them so uh, yeah so that's so so it'd be various things like that maybe informing the registrar about the wedding date and so on so marriage would be one the worship to be one you know um, okay maybe i'm leading worship this Sunday, and I need to prepare for that. So set list, scheduling of practice, informing the team, um, so things like that. Then I could have something, with the, since I take care of uh, one of our church locations, so okay, APC South, so things that needs to be done. Now it's we are reaching the end of the month, so a roster for the next month for, uh, you know, so these are some of the admin uh, work, right? So. A planning and administration thing for the roster for the entire month. So um, maybe the sound, the setup, the sound uh, heads, the guys who actually handle the sound. Uh, right now, I'm rostering, so there's no uh, you know, people who make the lead in the declaration. Again, right now, I'm rostering, so I need to do that. So, um, so things like that, right? Uh, different rosters, children, church, worship team, uh, worship leaders, and rostering. So, so those are some things. Okay. Uh, that, so that could be one area. So things like that. So what what is it that I need to do daily? So we have these areas, and so uh, you know you you don't drop one area completely, just moving, you know, with all these areas simultaneously. So um, so that's um, that's a speciality or the typical uh, characteristic of this Peter Bregman's uh, to do list, uh, which is not just one full list where you lose focus, but then six. At least six areas where you um, mark that area and you use it. Uh, and uh, if you time box that, you know, each of the tasks and then review it, then it's great. It helps, right? So I'll put it on the stream. You'll find that useful, I'm sure. Okay. Right. Okay. So we're looking at reliability, you know, responsible. Uh, and also excellence, you know, excellence is uh, it's a very relative thing because it's not perfection. It's not that everything there's a you know there's no hair out of place. It's not that, but the person is going doing their best, okay, the best of their ability. They're giving their best, and uh, they've worked hard. They have given their best effort, and uh, so that is what we are saying, you know, excellence. And also we can you know define standards for excellence. Right uh, for whatever area we can say, okay, this is what uh, we are going to be looking at okay, uh, in this particular month or in this particular year. You know, we can constantly change that benchmark 
but do they have excellence in that or are they very complacent in what they do you know it's like it's okay uh, you know it's fine this is what i can this is what i will you know it's it's okay uh, right so do they have that kind of an attitude now well people can actually grow into it right if they want if as long as they say okay i want to do a you know, I, I want to do the best and i i want to do a good job and i want the outcome to be good right if they have that um in their heart then we can actually you know kind of fine tune that nurture that and say okay why don't you look at this standard okay uh you want something that is whatever you put on screen you want that to be error free right so why don't you you know why don't we look at that no grammatical no error no spelling mistakes uh, let's look at that so th those can be some of our you know the standards of excellence right okay then the other thing is that uh, continuous growth this also you know maybe people need some inspiration uh, maybe people need uh, maybe they may not, not even you know uh, consider sorry um, this right so people some some are very innately curious and they want to learn each and everything right? some maybe not um, but you know this is something that she can inspire people right uh, that they grow in all areas and continue to and they continue to learn to be inspired uh, inspired the curious and they want to you know, grow so so this is very important even for us personally as leaders only when we grow can we take others to the levels where we have grown right we can't push people beyond you know where we where we are right um to inspire to take people to where we are is uh, is something that we can do so which means that we need to be constantly and consistently growing ourselves right especially in terms of uh, uh, in maturing uh, to christ likeness right continuously growing okay one very other uh, you know thing that we need to notice along with this is this is an area of uh, you know character is that though they don't have any personal agenda what do we mean by that it means that uh, if you know some people say okay i want to serve uh, but behind that is really uh, you know what they actually mean is i want to be known right? i want to be visible so okay people are saying i want to serve fine you serve in an area which is you know non visible right that is also serving it's not like you're putting you putting you in front of everyone putting you on display but um you know you serve in this particular area which is maybe like you know you need to come in and open the place and arrange the chairs not a very visible thing right uh, to uh, you know you need you finish your task even before people come and then after people have left you're stacking up things and putting it back not very visible again right but if a person has a very personal agenda of you know i just want to be known here uh, i want to be elevated to a position here then you know then we know that okay this person has a personal agenda they are just come so that it's a selfish interest right so um, if that is there in people uh, then either we need to work at it to make sure that that's that doesn't continue you know and how does that happen well by example personal example where we say okay this is what serving is right by teaching and uh, by principle and by precept and by you know personal examples so so by precept we mean okay this we show them from the word okay this is what serving is this is what uh, uh, you know the, the lord jesus himself this is how he served so this is how we serve and uh, you know this is what we do so um, by precepts so they get an understanding and by example so if we teach and then if that is not seen in our lives then it's a very mixed signal that we are sending out right so i uh, need to see it in our lives and then well people do change right so so that's the one that's one thing that we need to uh, clearly look out for right no personal agenda 
uh, the other thing is um, the gifting and calling, you know, gifts uh, and the call of God. Now, we know that uh, you know certain areas or all areas you know, has its own, um, like God has placed each member in the body to carry out the different function. And there is a gift which enables that particular function. Right? There's a gifting and uh, which, which enables that call. Right. If you look at the fivefold, yes, you know we know that uh, you know there is that this is the call of God, and there is the gifting which, uh, well, let's say if, they, if, the, if it's the apostolic, well, we see uh, you know certain certain traits and certain gifts that flow along with it. Right. If it's a teaching, then you you see that gifting which flows along with it. So um, the gifts which accompany actually confirm the call. Right. So maybe a person is desiring to be something that they don't have the gifting for, they don't have the uh, you know natural ability for, and uh, and you know they're just struggling, right? So we can actually help them and put them in areas where they are gifted and called, so that they enjoy doing what they're doing, right? Um, so to recognize that, okay, do they have the gift and call, and they do have a call? Now, is this what God is calling them to do? What do you design, right? Um, and what are they saying Even when they talked about their testimony and how God has led them? And, you know, you know, we get an understanding, okay, this is how God has led them. This is how God has called them, what God has called them to do and so on. So we can reaffirm that, right? Um, and we notice certain things that that flow, you know, certain gifts that are flowing in their lives. So we can, you know, we can, encourage them to grow in that gifting uh, also right so these are some this is another thing to find out okay uh, another thing is are they good followers you know we looked at it earlier also uh, like the lord jesus he did what he saw the father do he heard he was waiting on the voice um, on the instruction of the father and he did that right uh, he valued the words of the father so uh, not only did he value but he you know carried it out was obedient and he knew the purpose so to be a good leader is also means that um, you're not hesitant to to do what needs to be done uh, you're not hesitant to you know do certain things that uh, carry out instructions Okay. Um, okay. Here's a question. In a workplace setting, managers might have a tendency to push their team towards being more and more visible. Okay. How can a believer strike a balance between the agenda of the boss and the employee's godly standards? Okay. Um, pushing more and more visible in the sense. Uh, can you just explain that, Divya? Like. Uh, Yeah, in the sense of uh, uh, like, uh, even if uh, the job at hand is being taken care, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in order to get, uh, for example, I'm just saying, for an example, if there is a like a rating or mm -hmm. performance rating, so uh, it's like uh, for beyond uh, like beyond expectations, uh, what uh, the boss can say is, okay, you need to be uh more um like pushing towards more of a mm. uh you know uh visibility towards the client in terms of okay mm. you have to improve in terms of that and this uh it's not wrong mm. but sometimes it becomes too much uh stressful i see okay so what you're saying is uh reporting of a task done right uh, uh or of a project done so that the person evaluating understands what was done so you're saying okay to push it beyond more and more um in the sense uh you're reporting what was done even every small thing you want to show it as showcase it as something that was special is that something on those lines yes yes yeah yes. so i think uh, yeah so that definitely there needs to be uh, you know a presentation of what was done otherwise the uh, you know communication of what was done uh, otherwise you know that is why we have reports and appraisals and so on so otherwise they 
people cannot assess and evaluate the work. So as long as uh, you know, uh, you know it. Okay, this is what is, um, this is what I've done, and this is what I'm presenting. And th there is a way of uh, presenting in a in a good way, right? So that um, it is uh, uh, like um, the proverb says, you know, a word fitly spoken at the right time is like. Uh, you know, uh, apples of gold in settings of silver, you know, saying that, OK, uh, it is something which is presented well, you know, a word that is spoken at the right time. It's like that. Um, so in similar ways, uh, we can, you know, present it well, but not exaggerate, right? Now make a tall claim uh, of something that we did not do. We know that, you know, the Spirit of God immediately, you know, um, so we can present it in a way that is attractive, that's, that communicates what, what was done, uh, but without any exaggeration, without any you know, misrepresentation of facts. That's, that's fine. Um, I think that's, that's, uh, that definitely needs to be done. Um, yeah, so if the boss is pushing for something, a misrepresentation of facts, just for the sake of you know, uh, pleasing the client, or just for the sake of uh, uh, getting, the, then uh, we know it's a it's a it's a tough thing, right? Um, and that's a call that you need to take to say no this far and no more, right? Uh, and it happens. It's a it's a struggle. It's a hap it happens when the boss does not understand, and uh, even in terms of you know, like a, let's say it's a sales oriented job, then. Um, the boss might say, "Okay, it's okay. Just, you know, just tell something and sell it. It's the end of the month. Today is the thirty-first. We have to, you know, close the month uh, on a good note and sell something. Uh, I mean, tell something and sell it, right? Um, but you need to hold your ground and say, "Okay, I will sell, but this is I'm not going to make a wrong commitment to the client and do it." Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Okay, so we need to be good followers. We need to, uh, you know, obey. But when we say obey, we are saying again, you know, it has to be, uh, you know, we have to be uh, true to ourselves. We have to be people of integrity. Um, you know, especially in a setting which is, uh, where which is not really uh, well conducive. Right? Let's say Daniel lived in a court. The people were all. You know, all kinds of people. They were all in witchcraft, and uh, and he was actually made a leader over them. So you know, uh, so that's. Uh, I wonder how he did it. You know, that's that's something. That's a conversation I really won't have with Daniel. How did you survive day to day in such a setting? You know, Nebuchadnezzar's court, these kind of people, and all kinds of things happening. How did you hold fast to your testimony? How did you continue on? You know, what made you <laughs> really go to work every day? Right, so uh, well, Danny did it. It's possible. Uh, we just need to. It's not easy, right? Okay, so to be good followers and to be good nurturers. So that's uh, important thing. That's what we are looking at, right? So um, to be people who will nurture others. Okay. Uh, so to be able to raise up other leaders to be able to nurture others to be to be able to see the good in people to see, be able to see the potential in people okay um so not to look down on people okay but to esteem them highly okay uh, because they they're not finished products yet as much as we are not finished products we are all works in progress so they are also works in progress people whom god has interested us to lead so uh, to be able to nurture, okay. Um, so the word, I mean, when we look at the word nurture, the picture that comes is a, you know as that of a mother, as that of a father, to feed, uh, to make sure, to protect, right, to encourage, um, nurture not just physically but also emotionally, right, and spiritually. So to be good nurturers, to be able to, you know, do that. It's not to pamper. It's not to uh, you know, say yes to everything, but uh, you know, a person who nurtures does it. You know, speaks the truth in love, right? And uh, to love unconditionally, at the same time, you know, being firm. You know, God loves us unconditionally, um, but He calls out. You know, if things are not right, He would call out with the intention of. Uh, uh, 
for our own good. He's calling out is for our own good. He's correcting us is for our own good, that we don't destroy ourselves. So with that heart, right, with the Father's heart, we you know, we need to nurture others. Right? And so do they have that capacity? You know, if they if they see someone who is uh, uh, who maybe is, is not as skilled as they are, you know, are they helping them? Are they are they withholding information? Uh, do they so that they look good and the others look bad? Right? These are you know, small um, signals that we can pick up. You know, uh, are they putting them down? Even in terms of humor and so on, are they lifting them up, lifting other people up? Are they being helpful? You know, uh, so then. We can see that, oh yeah, these are. Now we looked at eleven characteristics. Now, now all these uh, characteristics may not be full blown and you know uh, in people, right? They may not be very visible in people, uh, but then, uh, or it could be in a in a in a in a very raw state, right? Um, but we can nurture as leaders. We can nurture. Right, we can. Um, it's going to take time. It's good. It can be very frustrating, right? Uh, it can be. You can really test our patience, and right? we might think like, you know, how many times, how many times have I corrected this person? How many times have I, you know, um, said the same thing over and over again, and yet, you know, this person has not got it. Um, well, if we look at our own lives. Well, God had to. You know, God and the Lord does continue to be patient with us, so we extend that same patience to others as well, right? Um, so that's the, yeah, that's the role of uh, us as leaders to to identify the potential. Okay, so then it becomes, you know, it becomes really interesting. Uh, you know, our our role. Maybe if you're if you're a pastor, uh, if you're called to, you know, pastor church. Or maybe as a life group leader, maybe as a Bible study, you know, you're conducting a Bible study in a place, you know, uh, as a life group leader. So it becomes, you know, you see your role not just as a person who is sharing something from the Word, but also as, you know, identifying, praying, or laboring, co-laboring with God to identify, you know. The potential in people to identify the gift and calling in people and to nurture them in it and to point them in it right i'm sure all of us have you know god has used different kinds of people to speak into our lives right um, right from the time we we came to know him as lord and savior the lord is uh, right from sharing the gospel maybe or maybe it was just you know you just read the tract or read the word and you believe you know, whatever it is god you know during our journey, God has used people to speak into our lives, to nudge us, to to be signposts to us, to point us to, you know, back to the way when we were kind of distracted and going away. God has used people, so uh, we need to be such people as well, right? To others, right? And intentionally um, look out for potential leaders. And entrust them with responsibilities. Okay, so nurturing leaders. Let's go into a bit of a, a you know, uh, some more detail of how do we uh, nurture leaders. So we looked at the potential leaders. We looked at some of these qualities that uh, that people need to have. Okay, so you identify those qualities. Let's say someone has all these eleven qualities or and more, and uh, so we we need to nurture them right and take them through. Uh, you know, multiple stages um, till they are able to function as leaders, right? And again, we're talking about uh, spiritual leadership. We're talking about, um, and this can be applied, you know, across uh, in a secular setting also. Okay, but it's a uh, it's a lot more. I think uh, um, I don't know. It can like maybe a lot more br brutal there, right? Um, in a sense, people just uh, they they you know look at people. Of course, it's changing in the workplace. Also, they look at people that what they can give. And uh, as long as you can give, you're there. And then if you if not, then your you know your position is not there. So um, they value you based on what you can give, and not as you as a person, right? Um, to to a large extent, it's that. But that is also change, changing in the workplace. Right? Okay, so as pastors, leaders, you know, we are to nurture other leaders, and 
people go through different stages. Okay, let's look at the, you know the, the initial stage. The first stage would be what we can call as a preparation stage. Now, now we identify the people, and uh, you know in the preparation stage, we are sharing the vision. Okay, sharing the overall vision, the big picture. This is what we are about. Okay, that that needs to be shared in a formal setting. That needs to be shared. Maybe in an informal setting as a reminder. Hey, remember, you know, this is what we are about. Right? This is what church is for. You know, this is what we are going after. So um, you reiterate, you share the vision. Okay. And uh, sharing also what we want done in a certain area of ministry. Okay. And how to go about doing it. What do what do we what do we need to do? Okay, this is what we want to do, and this is how we go about it. Okay. And we are also emphasizing commitment, character, you know, all these attributes that we see that we are expecting out of the leader. Okay, so we kind of, so this could happen over a conversation. This could happen over a formal uh, training or, a, you know, formal, uh, it, it could be, it can happen parallelly when we're doing other tasks, you know, let's say just going out to uh, meet someone, Okay, and then this person is also with you, and then we talk about this. Uh, just remind themselves, uh, remind them about it. So, and then talk. Hey, let's talk about your, you know, what what your the area that you're serving. Um, you know, where, where are you looking at these things uh, as, as you serve? As you're looking at these things, you know, what helps you? So, in a casual conversation, but it can also be a very formal conversation, saying, okay, why don't we meet and let's talk about this? Okay, so. Um, you're meeting in a place and they're very intentional. Okay, this is what you're going to be talking about. Um, and you know, both is both are possible, right? So this is a preparation stage where you're reiterating, okay, this is the big picture. And it's very important. Okay, we cannot assume that the person understands the tasks. Like we cannot assume that the person understands how to go about doing it. So some of the things that you're saying, you know, it could be uh, to your your you could be second guessing yourself, you know, maybe you know, I'm being too detailed i'm being too you know uh, am i being like am i micromanaging things right um just to share what needs to be done is not micromanaging it's not interfering with that person's you know um tasks or responsibility right you you're setting the standard you're sharing the big picture and uh, that sharing of that big picture is very important to set the context for why they are doing what they're doing Okay. That really sets the context um, because with this in the background, I'm going to do this, right? In the sense, with this vision, I'm going to be doing this. So that that is that always, you know, really fuels why I need to get up early in the morning, why I need to be there when no one else is there, why I need to come and clean the place. You know, this is the big picture, right? So you're setting the context for that. Okay, so that's the preparation stage. So, well, the preparation stage could, we don't know, we can't really put a time frame to it, right? But we only wish that it's, it's, it's quicker, right? So the person can go to that initial stage of uh, stepping into that leadership role. So the, there's been a, let's say, a formal appointment or that, you know, we're just saying, communicating to the others, saying that, okay, this person here will take care of this role. This person will take care of the ushering. Okay, um, they're going to take care of usher, ushering, and so initially, we are again we are being involved you know, as a leader. You are involved in involved in what you're providing the guidance. You pro, you're, sh you're showing them okay how it needs to be done, telling them about okay, uh, I mean, how often do you communicate with the team? You know, certain things that that ushering requires. Uh, rosters that need to be done, the scheduling that needs to be done, finding out people's availability, you know, the best way to go about doing it and, uh, you know, how to communicate maybe the, uh, with the team, you know, politely and, uh, you know, uh, courteously and so on, right? Um, and so on. So uh, just giving that guidance, giving that training. And uh, does it require any, any um, equipment, right? Does it require any any um, any tools okay the tools can be you know something physical uh, that, that that is required you know maybe there's a media team and then probably they need a laptop they need a 
that what they're having is not working. Maybe they need some cables that are not functioning. You no know, things like that, right? What are, what is the equipment that is required and the training to use that equipment? Um, so we facilitate that as well. We don't need to necessarily do it ourselves, but we facilitate that, right? Uh, the equipping and uh, so, and also initially, you know, they may need some help in finding out. Uh, again, all that we are looking at, you know, we would be looking at in detail in uh, church administration, right? So I'll just quickly move on right, after mentioning this. So uh, also we need help in, uh, they may be putting the team together, maybe, you know, uh, growing the team, they would need help in uh, maybe people, you can suggest people because you've been there and you can, maybe you are able to identify uh, and so on. So you help them. And then once the team is put together, well, things don't just automatically happen. There could be some challenges relating to each other, some personality challenges and some, some challenges like people not showing up, people not, uh, you know, people not communicating etc so help them through that and guide them guide the leader through that um, and also I mean, the leader might make some mistakes right leader might forget so we are there to provide that correction and uh, just to remind them why we are doing what we're doing right? that's the initial stage so the leader has actually stepped into that role but we are also involved quite um, um, uh, involved regularly to provide all that uh, that is required support and and an encouragement and correction and so on then then there is a settling in stage you know where the leader is doing well you know leaders enjoying the work the leader is doing well making decisions training people the team is functioning well and uh, so that is a time to not be so heavily involved right so we can we can actually step back and as they keep moving uh, forward and also uh, during this time we just we just don't completely you know disconnect so that's the mistake some we can make right oh everything is going fine let me just disconnect you know, we you get feedback you know you get reports you see how things are uh, okay how was it this sunday uh, how did it go um, is everything or doing everything going on okay or uh, you know do you need any help uh, is everything fine or just getting some regular feedback and and providing some input hey i you know i i read this article and uh, this was about uh, you know volunteering and how volunteers and volunteers get burnout uh, and how to prevent that burnout you know um, so i'll just forward that article to you why don't you take a look at it right so uh, uh, maybe that person requires certain things on you know, teams, you know, how to lead a team, how to communicate with the team, and so on. That's not their strong area, maybe, uh, or they need to grow. So you help them that, right? So this, uh, this is a settling in stage where there is input, and you are taking feedback, but you're not so quite heavily involved, right, in the day to day or week to week. Okay. Then there is a growth stage, right? So the the, the leader is actually growing the that area of ministry or that team. Um, you know, it's 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 growing beyond where it was when you actually interested them as a leader. They're able to make a lot of progress. They're growing, and uh, so here also our involvement is actually diminishing. You know, we are just not so involved now. Uh, just providing the vision and direction. Okay, the, the leader is able to make certain you know some good judgment calls. The leader is able to correct. The leader is able to train, equip. So. Um, and uh, you know of course you're always available to take feedback uh, and and also provide guidance and maybe correction even you know that does not change right and uh, the next stage we can say is a maturity stage stage where the leader is raising up other leaders okay, there are leaders who are raising up within the team you know the other potential leaders and uh, this leader begins to raise up other leaders. The way you raised up this particular leader and interested them with that leadership role, this particular leader whom you raised up is able to raise up other leaders. So you know that, okay, that's a you know, mature stage, uh, or maturity stage of leadership where um, they are delegating their responsibility to them and they're doing well, right? Um, so we can actually take the leader to a to another level of leadership 
altogether. Maybe a bigger role of leadership. Maybe they can now take care of you know a, a bigger area if it is if it is there, right? A bigger area of leadership, um, or maybe a higher level of uh, maybe not just you know two three areas of ministry, but then higher level of the thing in the same ministry, higher level of responsibility in the same if it exists, right? So we can do that, and. Uh, the last stage would be transition, in the sense where the leaders actually grown to all that can be done in that particular area of ministry or uh, area of responsibility. So the thing is to maybe you know the, the leaders have the leaders whom the, he has developed, he or she has developed, are taking up uh, and they are doing things well. So maybe it's time to appoint another person to handle that, and uh, you know. And maybe this person can step into some some other role altogether because they are now uh, functioning quite well as leaders. Maybe they can mature with their maturity and experience and learning. They can handle a bigger area of ministry, a bigger area or a different uh, area of ministry altogether. Right. So these are things, possibilities, right? And uh, and we see that you know this is a you know if if done well, uh, it is really a very uh, satisfying, very fruitful um, uh, thing to do, and and some of this takes time, right? Uh, some of this, uh, and uh, we can't say, you know, we can't say that it it'll take ten years, fifteen years. No, some people are very very quick, some people are uh, very committed, and you know they are fast learners, and uh, and also growing, you know, uh, rapidly, spiritually spiritual maturity and everything so we can, we can never put a time frame but uh, it's good to uh, it's it's good to you know be consistent and continue on and uh, and see that uh, you know things happen in this in this manner right okay so uh, any questions here any questions Okay, so it's a it's a very encouraging, uh, satisfying role, you know, as a leader. Okay, so um, for us to be able to raise up other leaders. Now, is it easy? No. Uh, will there be disappointments? Probably. Uh, maybe somebody doesn't want to, doesn't you know, or halfway through wants to quit, and you had high hopes for them and. Uh, Maybe they, you know, they didn't want to follow through, or for whatever reason. And you, you know, you you see someone who has so much potential, but they keep tripping, but they keep making the same mistakes, and uh, they're not willing to go beyond that mistake. You know, that that can be very frustrating uh, for that person and for you also as a leader. It, it, is it possible? Yes, you know, that that could happen, um, but we don't give up. Right, we don't give up. See, now we can't push this on to people. Okay, uh, it has to come from them, right? Whoever whom you want to develop as a leader, uh, they should be willing. Right, you cannot force it. We can we can facilitate, we can uh, encourage, we can present, we can you know share these opportunities. Right, but ultimately it has to come from uh, from the from the people themselves right then we need to understand that okay uh, so next thing is that uh, what develops leaders we just go look at a few thoughts on uh, what really develops uh, uh, leaders and how we can we you know how can we you know do this uh, so we looked at these several stages so when we create opportunities like when we make space um, okay how do we set Boundaries when we try to nurture someone. Okay, uh, so when we say boundaries, um, so can you just um, explain that, Divya? Like uh, boundaries. Yeah, I, I was uh, trying to understand in terms of both the person who is leading as well as uh, the person who is being led. Uh, like there can be uh, there can be personalities where. 
uh, people can push the other person too far or mm. there can be personalities where the the person who's being led can you know um encroach uh, the leader's boundary right mm. uh, yeah so there is uh, there are boundaries to be set i believe mm. that uh, the personal uh, the personal choices or yeah not yeah 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 you're right yeah so when it comes to um, boundary between the natural and the spiritual that also you know um, like uh, i think we would have learned this in uh, kingdom building um, when we studied about kingdom builders uh, about the paul and timothy and and their nurture their mentoring relationship so uh, we and also about the local church we know that there are boundaries between the natural and the spiritual you know yes we are in the family of god and and so on but you know there are these boundaries that we need to um respect right so the thing is this um we always respect the free will of the person right we never force things uh we can uh, we can set expectations we we uh, we can definitely uh, you know when it comes to certain when it comes to doing a particular task you know there are expectations and uh, there are standards so those are some things that we can enforce and say you know this is this is how you know we need to meet the standards this is the expectation this is how it needs to be done right but for a person who um, let's say who uh, when something like this you know when you're nurturing someone into a leadership position and then well the person is just just not willing just doesn't want um then we cannot we cannot step in that we cannot overstep our boundaries and force okay uh, we can be we can be firm we can suggest but we cannot uh, force ourselves um at the same time as uh, like you said as a person who's being nurtured okay i need to respect uh, um the time the the you know the privacy uh the preferences of the person who is uh, who's the leader who's nurturing me as well okay maybe the leader would say okay this is all the time that i have we can of course ask we can request but we need to respect right the the time and the and the preferences of the leader so yeah it works both ways um uh, i think what would be helpful is if we can actually read that um building people by the spirit right when we can look at that section in the book kingdom builders how oh, that will be really helpful to um, put these boundaries you know. like uh, the bible also warns us you know um, paul warns about um, about people who are busy bodies um, who show up in people's homes and uh, you know so those are those are certain things to be avoid that we need to avoid in our zeal to nurture others uh, we should not make those mistakes right in our zeal to uh, say okay this person oh wow this is such a wonderful uh, opportunity let me just go all out and do it we should not really force ourselves uh, into these kind of uh, uh, in, in these kind of situations right so we need to be careful yeah so we create yeah yeah devya thanks so we yeah, create yeah. yeah one more question yeah no no please go ahead first i didn't want to interrupt yeah right right okay so um so when we create opportunities we actually develop leaders okay create opportunities in the sense when we make some space when we let's say we suddenly realize hey that this is a role this person can do this is a task this person can you know actually carry out and there is space it's not like you just you know creating something just for that person to develop no but this, actually this particular task helps the organization grow or helps the church helps the ministry you know this particular task it helps it actually enhances the whole thing right maybe we want to have a greeter you know uh, right at the at the entrance when people walk in you know we we know that people walk in and then you usher them to their seats whatever but then hey, uh, maybe this this person's personality is so much that uh, you know it's so uh, warm and friendly and uh, it'll really help if the person is there outside the door and welcoming people right so you create a role and you develop leaders okay that's just a small example but you know in we can look 
into whatever you know the ministry role is the ministry function is and then see you know is there a role for this person so that this person can grow okay okay so we'll stop here Thank and then you. we'll yeah most welcome we'll continue uh, in our next class just check the stream um, after the class i'll upload that um, that list as well right the to do list okay thank you god bless bye. thank you pastor right see you bye bye thank you pastor